What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical average American here today to react and learn about how Canadian Mountie uniforms are made. I love learning about the Canadian Mounties because they're just so iconic. And one of the reasons they are so iconic is because of their uniforms. I don't even know if Canadians realize how much Americans associate Canada with Mounties. When Americans think of Canada, we, we think of maple syrup, we think of hockey, we think of Mounties. They are right up there. And I think it's also very funny. I'm guilty of this, but most Americans really believe that the Mounties are the everyday normal police force of Canada, that they're just everywhere, all over the streets of Canada, fighting crime and taking prisoners and keeping the peace on horseback. And I, I learned about Canadian Mounties and their training a while back. And very sadly, I learned that they're actually like a very specialized mounted kind of task force that's called in for very, very particular circumstances. But that doesn't stop them from being really, really cool. And the uniforms, again, are a big part of that. And today, we're going to learn how the Mountie uniform is made, what it means, how it's distributed, and all those little interesting details about this iconic red uniform and the hat. So I'm very excited for this. So let's take a look. These men and women are some of the newest members of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Wow. Also known as the Mounties. Yeah. It's so, man, what can I even say about this? It's, it's strange in a way. The Mountie uniform is somehow super cool and very like authoritative and yet kind of friendly, like kind of Canadian. I don't know if that's what Canadians want to hear, but I'm just being honest. It's like intimidating but yet warm. I, I don't know, it's, it's, it's strange, it's bizarre. The RCMP is Canada's federal police force, known worldwide for their iconic scarlet tunics, yes. referred to as the Red Surge. The Red Surge. Oh, I think I'd heard that before, the Red Surge. Yes, the tunics, excuse me, not just uniform, red tunics and the hat. I don't know the history of the hat, honestly, but Red Surge, what a name as well. Each cadet gets fitted for their tunic about halfway through their 26-week training program. Okay. It's a really exciting moment. It makes you very proud to be here. When you oh my gosh, that is such a good thing to point out. Like, if you're, if you're in training, if you're Canadian trying to become a Mountie, what a special moment is it to be kind of getting sized and fitted for the, the Mountie uniform? that you've kind of seen your whole life and that you're gonna be, you're becoming. It, it must make it very real and must be so awesome. You put it on, you feel pride. I cannot believe it when I saw myself in the mirror. Yeah. While this is what you're likely to see Mounties wearing in the field, yeah. the red surge is worn at ceremonial events. Right, right, hold on, I can't gloss over this. This is really funny to me. American, Americans would be shocked like to see this photo. They, if, if Canadians were like, what is this? Who are they? They'd be like, I don't know, the police? Like, that could be police from anywhere, all over the world. Uh, certainly, Americans would be shocked. I was shocked when I learned that Mounties don't always wear their uniform, the red serge, the red tunic. They don't always wear that. I, I would think they actually wear this more often than not, this much more practical uh, much, much, much more practical and inconspicuous. You're not sticking out like a sore thrum, thumb, which I imagine could be, <laughs> when you really think about it, how annoying would that be trying to like fight crime and like do anything covertly or secretively or with nuance if you're wearing that bright red uniform with a giant hat. So it is really perfect for like a, a representation of Canada and for tradition and ceremonies, but uh, not practical at all, unless you want to really, I mean, I say that, but if a Mountie in full red uniform with the hat was like just storming after me, like on the street, 
like ready to capture me if I committed some crime, I'd be terrified. I'd be absolutely terrified, so I don't know. <laughs> but yes, this is what Mounties usually wear, uh, which surprised me. Mounties wearing in the field, the red surge is worn at ceremonial events. Right. It's part of what's known as the kit that's issued to the 1,000 cadets that graduate from the RCMP training academy each year. Wow. Along with Only 1,000 graduate every year. That's not that's not that many. Like it is certainly a, a select group of individuals. Along with the tunic, the uniform includes trousers known as breeches, yeah. a Stetson hat, a Sam Brown belt, and a pair of high leather Strathcona boots. Yeah, and the gloves. Hold on, I, I want to listen to this again because I I don't actually know everything that goes into the uniform, so I, I'm interested in this. The uniform includes trousers known as breeches, yeah. a Stetson hat, yeah. a Sam Brown belt, nice. and a pair of high leather Strathcona boots. Dang, full leather boots and gloves, I think. The wow. tunics are made by a company in Quebec before being shipped here to the okay. RCMP Academy in Regina, Saskatchewan. Okay. They're made of wool and include a satin lining. Right now they're not- Oh, a satin lining and wool. Wool is like- very, very warm, right? I feel like we don't make much out of wool here in the United States. I don't know, maybe, uh, I don't know much about that stuff, but I think wool keeps you very, very warm. And the satin is just a nice touch, just a bit fancy. Oh, they're not as comfortable as you would think, but they are custom oh. made primarily for the look. <laughs> <laughs> and he immediately is like, they're not that comfortable to, to, honestly, between you and me, they're not that comfortable, but they look awesome. So they're not going to be as functional to do your everyday kind of uh, job in them. Right, right. Here at the Academy, a team of 20 tailors perform all the alterations for each cadet. 20 tailors. Like, I don't know if they're full time, but 20 tailors working there for the Mounties, like just to make sure all of the cadets are fitted properly. That's pretty cool. P takes it pretty serious. About eight of them are custom tailors and the rest are general tailors. And general right. tailors usually do the pants and the breeches, and the custom tailors are the one that does the red tunic. We yeah. take them apart, we put them together, and do the alterations. Oh yeah, they're like putting on the buttons and everything onto the tunic, okay. Alterations for each tunic can take up to two days. That's not that, that's not that long. They're, they're saying it like that's long. That's an amazing turnaround. Like, need an alteration to your tunic. It's like, okay, two days later, done. Uh, if you if you get like a suit tailored or something, isn't it? Wouldn't it be like weeks or something? I'd think. If an officer outgrows his or her uniform, they simply request a new one huh. at no additional charge to them. Nice. According to the RCMP. Dang, that's a nice belt. I'm liking these close-ups that we're getting as well. The gold buttons, this belt. The total cost of each cadet's uniform, including the red surge and their normal duty clothing, comes out to about 4,500 Canadian dollars. <laughs> Holy! Is that one of the most expensive uniforms of any military, like, group? Anywhere, honestly? Is it the Mounties? Uh, $4,500 for... The red surge, including the pants, hat, uh, leather boots, leather gloves, and their normal outfit that's more practical, the black one, but that doesn't look very expensive. Wow! I mean, it is super nice materials, and you can kind of tell, and there's a lot of, like, labor involved, but $4,500 for your uniform. That's inc that's insane. That That's amazing. And, I mean, you can't really argue with the results, I guess. It looks great. Yeah, and those about five hundred dollars of that cost is for the boots. What did they say? Yeah, okay. This is this is what I thought. And about five hundred dollars of that cost is for the boots. Five hundred dollar boots. Remember that, Mounties, when you're waking up for your parade, you're putting five hundred dollar boots on. Oh my God. They, I mean, they are nice boots, <laughs> and they're very big. Each pair is handcrafted by the Alberta Boot Company. Wow. Oh. Before being sent to the leather shop at the RCMP Academy. Cool. Where each pair is custom fit to each cadet. The RCMP Academy has a leather shop built into it as well. They really spared no expense. 
for, for making sure these uniforms, every detail is taken care of. So we look after all of the brown ceremonial leather. Each pair of boots is fit to each individual cadet. Yeah. Whether that means stretching them or making them smaller. To stretch them, they are soaked in um, a tub and then we open. <laughs> I don't know why I think that's funny. I thought he was about to say something really technical and he's like, they are soaked. And I'm like, yes, yes. In a, I'm like, oh, what, what's the technical term for this, this, that of chemical? They're soaked in a tub. And I, <laughs> just a little funny, <laughs> unintentional. They are soaked in um, a tub. Oh. And then we open oh. them up with a series of blocks. Right, all right. A block that mimics the calf, a block that mimics the shin. That's and then cool. depending on the amount we need to stretch them, we open them up to the appropriate size that we need for each individual. Once we reach that size by blocking them like that, then we put them in our drying booth and they dry for about a week so that they will take that shape uh, permanently. We oh, that's, this is so cool. Like in my free, in my spare time, I like watching videos about how things are made as well. Yeah, like if, if you've ever, I don't know if Canadians have seen that TV show, How It's Made, where it's just like stuff getting made, like milk cartons and light bulbs and toothpaste or in candles, like whatever. I just like watching stuff get made, like these uh, Mountie boots as well. I like this. Do up to 32 pairs of boots in a week. And then they're issued to the cadet and they begin to do the arduous task of putting 20 to 40 different coats of polish on them so that they no longer look what? Uh, one dimensional. After what? the cadets are done polishing them, they look more three dimensional. What kind of crazy mounty initiation is that? You get your boots, your $500 boots, and you have to put on up to 40 layers of, well, what was it? Uh, one dimensional. 20 to 40 different coats of polish on them so that they- Polish. 20 to 40 coats of polish. I mean, they do look better, they're shiny, but oh my, how long does that take? I hope they show that. Dimensional. They might look shiny, but these pictures don't quite do them justice. Really? When you see them in person, these boots boast an almost otherworldly sheen. What? <laughs> the legend has been born. The legend of the otherworldly sheen. The shine of the Mountie boot. Just another thing that would kind of give you away. These, these, the more I learn, the more I think these uniforms are actually the worst for catching criminals in. Not that that's what they're meant for, but you know, they're, they're law enforcement at the end of the day. And if someone was a, committing a crime at a celebration while they were in this uniform, they'd have to do, they'd have to run around in their shiny, otherworldly, shiny boots probably would, you know, reflect some light and they'd be spotted and it'd make their job harder. But man, does it look good. <laughs> Get there, it takes a lot of polish. Oh, wow. We used to make them pay for it, but now Her Majesty decides she's gonna buy us polish. Okay. This is one of the techniques. The wow. idea- Okay, polish. <laughs> We're onto the polish. Let me situate myself. Are, are we gonna do 20 coats here? <laughs> here is to build up the color, you see, the difference in color is pretty drastic. Yeah. Polished boot and unpolished boot. Be yeah, it literally, wow, these are the same leather? It literally changes the entire color, like it's a different boot. Be, get it, it's super hot water, and uh, put a coat of polish on here. All we're doing uh -huh. is take the hot sponge, and we simply are rubbing the polish in. And it looks like it's doing nothing. Yeah. And all that's happening is we're filling in the pores. So we would do about 20 coats of these. It looks like it's doing nothing. And that's why you have to do 20 to 40 coats. And then it does a whole lot, but I wonder what the Mounties think of this <laughs> when it comes to polishing time. Uh, one of the tricks we do though, is we take pantyhose. Pantyhose. Put a whole pair of socks in there. And it's kind of like when you sand your car, you start off with coarse grit and go to a finer grit. And these pantyhose are actually a little bit finer grit and we'd actually just brush it off. The longer you go, you start getting okay. character in it. And it has a bit of a marbling effect as, the, as it takes the grain of the leather. All those memories you make shining boots with your troop mates. <laughs> Each pair of boots kind of tells its own story. <laughs> That's a good point. They probably shine, you know, if they're not doing anything, hanging out in the barracks, watching TV, whatever. 
whip out the boots. Let's polish it up, boys. Let's get in a circle. Boys and girls, let's get in a circle and polish our boots for a bit. Maybe it's a nice bonding experience. The red surge is just one of those things that just kind of stands out as being as uh, you know as Canadian as it as it can be. Yeah, that you know yeah. signifies to them that they're becoming a Mountie because that is you know one of the iconic symbols that separate the Mounties from other police forces in the world. It really does. Like very well said. It, they're spot on. This is like a symbol of Canada. This this look is known, and that is special. Okay, and there we have it. That is the end. That was that's quite enjoyable. Um, that was by Insider Business, actually, and I'll give that a like. I thought that was a really fun. Let me get. Let me see if I can get a picture. Okay, there we go. Of the Mounties taking a big old step in their beautiful uniforms. Uh, now every time I look at a Mountie, all I'm gonna think is how how long it took them to polish those boots and how expensive that uniform is. But honestly, I'm joking around because this was really fun to learn about. Really specific, honestly, but I liked that. I feel like it's something I never would have otherwise gotten to learn about. And yeah, for how iconic Mounties are and representative of Canadian culture to other countries like America, uh, I thought this was worth checking out. So I'm glad I enjoyed it. Anyway, if you enjoyed this as well, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to Canada and Canadian culture, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.